meditate a lot, a lot, and with just one single attention, just to help with the the higher energy from the original universe. Every day, I thank the councils and thank the power of God and the cosmic for helping humankind to become more enlightened, more loving, and peaceful. Helping the needy is really helping yourself. The reward is more than anything you can imagine. You're a good boy, and I love you forever, forever. You're my best friend. It's not how much you have; it's the best you give. Help yourself, you know. Cultivate, meditate, pray. You keep yourself in the same path, in the straight area. Keep your mind clean. And determined. God bless you. I love you. I just show you the way. You just have to walk. You see, that's why the more positive, the more meditation, the more your life change. Okay, positive, positive. You clap because I wear some nice clothes, yeah, man. Then I just hang the clothes here. Yeah, yeah. You should just like me, not my clothes. Girl, clothes I change all the time. Nobody translate for this Mongolian. You translating today? The other brother gone home. Ah, oh, everybody gone home. Oh, today everyone can sit inside. Is good, huh? It's better, huh? Yes. The people who has not come inside, if they want to come inside, they should sit downstairs. Okay, don't come up here, making trouble for us. And if you have to go, then also find a place to sit downstairs. Okay, you can also hear from downstairs. It's full TV anyway, right? Hey, new Hoshan, come see. You are wearing my clothes, right? How many wear my clothes? This one, this one is mine. I remember. This is mine. This is mine. This one. This one. This one. Yeah. The the that also, and this also, right? Also, and this also. Yeah. <sighs> I just ordered some clothes from Korean. I have not a chance to wear. I wear some at home, and then now they really why want to be monk, and then I have to give it to them. Mm. Yeah, and always clap clap when I wear nice clothes. Mm? Yeah, always say I like your, I like your robe, I like your shirt. Why don't say I like you? <laughs> <laughs> Because if you like my shirt, I peel it off. I like my, you like my robe, I take it off, and then nobody like me anymore. <laughs> love, me love you. Love, love. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know who loves me, who doesn't. If you don't have to be a master, then if you, and you want to be a monk and nun, then just wear monk and nun's robe, yeah. So no, so they know that they don't come and touch, touch, and you know, touchy feely. <laughs> Understand? It's good. It's good. I don't mean wearing. I don't mean I like to wear the the renunciation robe. I mean the life. You know, the lifestyle of monks and nuns. Very simple. In India, uh, Buddha's time even more simple. Yeah, people give you what you eat. They don't give. Okay, you don't eat one day, two days. Yeah, then you slim down. <laughs> yeah, I have good point. Yeah. Mm. 
uh, then people know they don't come and try to chat you up, you know, bling, 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 eyes or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm wearing all these kind of things because I just have to. I'm so old and some people still want to flirt with me. <laughs> I mean, not here, <laughs> outside. <laughs> I don't go out that often, but whenever I go out, there's some, somebody... Sometimes even go out on the street and stop my car. My God. I say, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Following around. My God. And I don't have bodyguard, you know? Yeah. What is all this here? Are they Mongolian? Ah, thank you very much. It's beautiful. You made it yourself? I mean, the Mongolian people made it? You made it? Yeah. The translation of the song. I know, I know. But you made the song? Yeah, yeah. You are the man in Mongolian. Uh, the brother initiates uh-huh. the song and read, uh-huh. written the lyrics. Uh-huh. And then one, uh, one initiate translated the song. Thank you. It was really nice. We all enjoyed it very much. Maybe later I ask you to sing one more time. <laughs> Sit here so the translator can hear me, can see me a little bit. Hmm? No, I still cannot. Okay, I sit like this. Hello, brother and sister. <laughs> Hi, you up there? <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> okay, I did not ask you to do anything, but it's good like that because if you stay in Korea, you know, together with the uh, other elderly monk nuns, then you should look the same. Okay, why make difference? Just because you are my monks instead of uh, they've been they've been monks a long time and you just been monk that doesn't mean you must look different. Hmm? Okay, yes. <laughs> look the same is better. Yes. Better together, you know. Yes. So they don't feel like <laughs> different and I'm different and <laughs> you know <laughs> together. Huh? If live together, yes. better look similar. Yes. Better. Yes. Mm. I don't mean I like to wear the monk's robe, I mean the life also. You know what I mean? Not just wearing simple clothes with the lifestyle, yeah? So simple, no responsibility, live like that. You know, go out, work a little bit, bring home a little money and then meditate, yeah? Yeah. The master already make a house away, you know? <laughs> make a little... <laughs> yeah. It's so simple. It's very... A good life like that. I'm not so fortunate. I have to do all kind of colorful job. <laughs> okay, guys. I uh, read you more story, okay? <laughs> yeah. According to Buddhism, and the believer and the tradition. When you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk, or, you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Oh, very interesting here, you know. Hmm. Okay, I also did not did not read this story yet. It's not too long. Hmm? Yeah, so we will be surprised together. Okay, yeah. this is a, a person named uh, Tetao Lakin. I don't know what is that. <laughs> First, I have heard. At one time, the Sekamoni Buddha stayed in a country called Lajuki, in the bamboo grove. 
At that time, I, mean Anan, uh, wearing very uh, decent clothes, you know, like make it proper, yeah, wearing proper clothes, yes. Come in front of the Buddha, kneel in front of him, and uh, uh, say to the Buddha, Praise be the world honored one. Um, the five person under, you know, Kiu Tang Yu, the five person with him, what did they do in the former life in order, in order to have thus merit that they became your first foremost disciples? Please tell us. So the Buddha say, Anan, you should know. These five people in the former life, they eat my flesh first. <laughs> and then they became healthier. To, you know, I help them with my flesh to, uh, so that they, uh, they do not die because of hunger. Because of that, in this lifetime, they become my first disciples and liberate first. Yeah. Whoa. Who among you remember this <laughs> past life? <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> vegetarian is first. Human flesh is also not vegetarian. It's not vegan. Capisco? Yes. Mm. <sighs> I also uh, speak, spoke again. I mean, I mean Anan. Anan also spoke again. Obeisance to the Buddha. In the former life, how, why did they eat your flesh first? Please, can you tell us detail? Oh, scary. Yeah. Probably he just uh, like uh, offering, you know, like there's nothing else, so he cut out his flesh and give it to them, just like he cut the blood and give it to them before. Yeah. Uh, to donate blood is uh, it's a normal thing nowadays. It's not like, but to cut the flesh and give to somebody, somebody requested, this is really gruesome. The Buddha say, Anan, you should know. Uh, from that time until now, it's this very, very, very long period already. Yeah, it's uh, oh, Asamkia Ian has passed. I mean, a countless, countless Ians has passed already. My. God, can you imagine wait is so long? Even you ate the flesh of the Bodhisattva. I don't think they wanted it. It's just the Buddha at that time was still Bodhisattva, was still practitioners, you know, that uh, aspire to be a Buddha. To be liberated is easier than to be a Buddha. Understand? Yeah. To be liberated, you can also, you can only find a Buddha and then you, you're okay. But to be a Buddha, you probably have to go through a lot of sacrifice and self-discipline and a lot of, lot of big compa- compassion and great vows, like save all beings, save how, as many beings as the sand in the Ganges River, or this and that and others. Understand? Yes. But this, that is for the shadow world only. If the person... A being came from a higher than shadow world, then it's different. Still have to go through a lot of a lot of sacrifice if they come here. Um, Anan is also on on this uh, planet Earth. There was a king, a uh, rule a big country. His name is Thiet Dao La Kinen. Okay, it's a long name. Never mind. We just call him. Uh, Kinnan, okay? Yeah, <laughs> simple. He, ha- he uh, ruled over 8,400 small country. Um, he has, you know, a lot of land, and, you know, <laughs> etc., etc. And he has also 40, oh no, 400 um, little tribes that also belong to him under his roof. He has Two, probably two million, no, maybe two hundred thousand wives and concubines. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, I wonder what he do with all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Must be a very strong king. <laughs> but the you know mo- normally this just saying that but the king doesn't take all them of them as wives, you know, they come in, they just serve the kings, you know, and serve the queens and do things and keep in household in the kingdom, in the king's palace, etc., etc. Huh? It's not necessary that uh, he uh, he takes them all as wives. Hmm? You capis? So don't try to ask to be a king or something <laughs> just because <laughs> king has many wives. <laughs> yeah? Any of you want to be king just because of wives? No? no? Better not. <laughs> King can make a lot of mistakes. Hmm? King can be forced, forced to do things against his will. You know, warring with other countries, chop chop people's heads and anything else, you know where. <laughs> to make them eunuchs. <laughs> Eunuch, yeah? Uh, he doesn't chop, but somebody else will chop for him. The woman come in the palace, have to go through virginity test. And then, okay, but the man going to the palace, he has to be (laughs) chop-chop. (laughs) Chop-chop. Chop-chop, the most important part of of his manhood. Understand that? So don't ever ask to be a king. You can do a lot of merit, do charity, do whatever you want, but don't ever ask May I dedicate all this merit so in the future I'll be a king? No, it's terrible. <laughs> Understand? Maybe a king nowadays is not so bad. You know, maybe he just has some harem and he doesn't chop chop uh, other men. <laughs> Whoa, imagine that karma. Hmm? Imagine that karma that you cause so many thousands of, or maybe hundreds of thousands of men to chop his manhood. How many lifetimes you have to undergo this chop chop yourself to pay all this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My God. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Okay? Maybe you can ask to be president or prime minister. <laughs> then you don't have to chop chop. Okay, but still. <laughs> still. <laughs> president and prime minister have to do also many unfavorable things, you know, maybe for the sake of his countries or maybe for their own position, you know, to, to solidify his con- position. Sometimes you have to use tricks, you know, things like that. It's not nice. And have to make war with other countries, even though he doesn't go out and kill people himself, but because of his order, many lives will be lost, including elderly innocent children, women, and all that. Okay? Mm. It's not a very good position to be envy and to wish to, have to be, to wish to, to, to be in that position. Besides, you know, suppose I become president, I have to walk all the, all the time in this such a big palace, you know? <laughs> I told you, just a presidential suit it's already so tiring to walk around and finding my attendant or my toothbrush on the other side of the room. You know, you come in and then your toothbrush all the other way, the bathroom <laughs> the other side, <laughs> just to find a toothbrush. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> and then you go all the way in the other side to find your bedroom, to find your shoes, your dress, and your perfume, or whatever. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right, this king is great like that. No? He rules many nations, but he's a very merciful person. That's, that is a real king. That's what I like. Mm? Very merciful. He always um, thinks of his people, how to improve their lot, make them happier, etc., etc. Yeah? He always thinks of his people. A very, very good king, diligent diligent in his job, 
always find some way or think of how to make his country better, how to make his citizen happier. Yes. Uh, very seldom he thinks of how to, you know, better his life or anything that benefit him or his family. Seldom. Oh God, it's so easy to say. <laughs> the king he will have already everything, right? <laughs> Hundred thousand eunuchs and two hundred thousand wives and and concubines. What else does he need? <laughs> <laughs> okay? If I were a king, I would say, oh, I don't really need anything. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, they will make sure I have a lot of clothes, a lot of food. I am not a king yet at all, and they already give me a lot of food every day here. <laughs> I have to share, you know? I'm glad to share. I just What I mean is, and then, you know, you know, I just say, I like this kind of batik, and then now I have hundreds of them every day. <laughs> so every day <laughs> you have to bear it. <laughs> okay, good, good. Mm. Mm, everyone in this country loved the king as a father. Yeah, very much like a father. Yeah. Are you okay, Togo? <laughs> you better today, your operation? Feel Sava? Okay. Yeah, it's a long time already, or just recently? One, one year already. Oh, but that doesn't mean you are normal yet. Sometimes take two years. It's better already, but it's not complete. Yeah, you take care, uh, take vitamin and good supplement to recover. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Master. <laughs> You're welcome. One time I had operation, I couldn't walk up and down for one year. Mm. It was uh, four years, four or five years ago. Mm. But I still was working, <laughs> working as usual. Mm. Just nobody see, you know, nobody really noticed. Because I always put color on and you know, always smiling and do my stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, at one time, suddenly, under his uh, dynasty, the, some comet, comet appeared. Hmm. And then many of the, um, not astrologers, the one who observed the uh, uh, scientists, you know, Star, the star scientist at that time came and told the king thus, Your Majesty, the comet uh, up here is, is not uh, very fav- favorable to, to us. It's going to be a big drought soon. It would continue for 12 years, the drought. Yeah. Uh, how... Uh, your Majesty must think ahead what to do so that the citizen won't die of hunger. The king heard that, very, very sad, very worried, so that he doesn't even want to eat his meal. Uh, At night he couldn't sleep. He was thinking, then how will my people survive? How can my people survive? He was worried so much for his people. So one time he called, he summoned all of his, um, you know, officials of the court to study this phenomena and find a solution. He asked his uh, officials, court officials, what do you think? How can I, how can we make, can, can any of you uh, find a way to make rain or any have any solution, any idea, any good uh, way to help our people when the drought comes. So many people, many of his uh, court officials, officials says, uh, okay, now we have to we have to make a, um, an announcement to all the countries and then calculate how many p- 
people we have all together, and then we calculate how how much we will eat. All these people will have to consume for twelve years long, and then they do that. Yeah. After they have studied how many uh, the the population, and then also the uh, available food, then they know that. Uh, in this case, every citizen later will have only like uh, maybe 10 kilogram of rice. Yeah. Then there will have to be very, very many people will still die of hunger. And every day the king loved the, his citizen so much, feeling sorry, so he, he cried all the time. He shed tears every day. He feel that he is the only one. He he himself is safe and full. Nah, eating full and everything is safe, but many people hungry. He doesn't. His heart doesn't feel very safe, very peaceful. He's heartbroken. One time, his wife and his children gone away, or the prince is gone away to like, for a walk or something outside. Mm. Then he kneeled down all by himself and, and, and said uh, into the space like this, I praise be all the Buddhas in the ten directions and the three period of time in the past, present, and future. Yeah. At the moment, my citizens are dying in numbers because of hungry. I want to... I want to sacrifice this body so that I can be reborn as a big, 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 great fish, you know, like a giant whale, yeah, so that I can have my body meat for my citizens to eat so that they became at least, uh, you know, uh, satisfied for a while. Mm. After he... Uh, after he said like that to all the Buddhas, he went, he, he climbed to the very high tree and dropped down to die. And then it is as he wished. He reincarnated into a, as a big, big, very, very big fish. His body is as long as 500 miles long. So very big. The whole nation can be satisfied, I guess. Yeah. At that time, there was five, uh, um, how you say, Thermocraya, five, five. Carpenters. Yeah, okay. There were five carpenters. They were taking their axe to go and chop some trees, axe down some tree. And then the, the fish saw them. You know, the great fish saw these five person, five carpenter, and say, uh, "If you are hungry, eat my flesh. After you eat full, you take some home as well, mm. and uh, tell others, you know, etc." Yeah. After, if I became a Buddha, I will like I will use a Dharma food teaching. Yeah, <laughs> Dharma teaching. Dharma food to save you first. Yeah. Please, please tell everyone in the, in the country to come and eat my flesh. Yeah. Oh, and uh, after they heard that, they were so happy. The five person, so hungry, so hungry. So they used their axe to to cut his his flesh to eat. Yeah. After that, they took some home as well. And then they told everybody to go there and get get the fish uh, to eat. Everybody come with uh, knives and axe and you know spear and everything and just cut him into pieces, alive still. Mind you, to kill a whale take a long time. You know, when people go out nowadays to fish and kill the whale, it's an agony death for him. It takes a long time for him to die. 
I don't know who can even feel good to eat the flesh of such a great being like that. It's not like the whale can die immediately, you know, no matter what they do, because it's so great. It take, took, takes a long time for the whale to die. It's an agonizing death. Therefore, everyone satisfied their hunger at that time. Mm. When people cut cut one side of him, like the right side already finished cutting, then he turned to the left side so that people cut the left side. That is the heart of the Buddha. But it is miraculously because of his compassion and love that after they cut the left side, he turned again to the right side, then the right side, his body is full again, and they cut again. This is like hell, understand? It's like the punishment for hell, but he is a good person. The punishment in hell sometimes, that they, they cut the flesh of the person for punishment, keep cutting, cutting, but it grow back again, and they cut again forever, understand? I mean, until the sin is uh, compensated. Yeah, but this person, he volunteered to suffer like a hell punishment just because he has love for his people. Therefore, he keep turning, you know, from left to right, left to right like that. And then, so these countries, these citizens, these people, have enough fish, meat to eat for twelve years long. Imagine the suffering. But after they been eating this fish flesh, they turned their heart. All of them became very compassionate somehow. And so, therefore, after they died, they all went to heaven. The Buddha reminded Anand thus, Anand, you should know the king Kenin at that time was my past past incarnation. And the five uh, carpenters that ate my flesh first, that was the Gyutongyu, the the group of Gyutongyu right now, all the citizens of that time, they now they are 80,000 uh, heavenly beings and all the disciples that I have saved, that I have, you know, initiated. My God. And you want, you think you can be a Buddha, huh? You want to be a Buddha, huh? Mm. So it's not like... (sighs) Sorry. It's not like you, okay, you became enlightened, yeah? And then, uh, just like that. <laughs> and then, and then all the people come to you, bow to you, and offering food and flowers, and then they're so glorious, and then you just uh, rescue them. <laughs> My God. You have to do something first so that the karma, Lord of Karma, you know, like certify you, thinking, okay, you're good enough to take some souls from my domain. Understand? Yeah. Even even not just past life, but present life as well, you have to suffer for them also, or a new, new one. It depends on how many people, and depends on what kind of people also. So you see, Jesus suffer. Hmm? He does nothing wrong. He has to be nailed on the cross like a criminal, the best person, the most benevolent, 
the most gentle person on the planet, as being prosecuted, you know, killed like a criminal. Do you understand, huh? It's not. You say it's not fair. <laughs> it's more than just not fair. It's wicked. It's cruel. It's horrible. This world is like that. Not say. Not just they kill animals or they kill each other. They kill saints, Buddhas. Understand? So our planet must change. Otherwise, don't ask why disaster. Don't ask why war. Don't ask why, you know, hurricane. Don't ask why um, this uh, tsunami, etc., etc. At that time, I, meaning Anan, and the mass assembly, her, the Buddha, told this story. Everyone has more respect and appreciation. They cannot believe all this, and then, but they, meaning, is so unbelievable, so inconceivable, what the Buddha all has to do for all beings. So they pray, they pay obeisance to him, and then left. <laughs> meaning the meaning the initiation came to an end, <laughs> I guess. Okay, that is the story, one story of the Buddha. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, another story, short story. Uh, a person named Ayuka. First I have heard, at one time the Buddha was in Save country in the uh, Prince Kida's garden. Remember? Remember the uh, the gold <laughs> the gold piece, yeah? The gold bricks. Okay. In, uh, one morning I and the Buddha, the Buddha and I, I mean Anan, went to the city for arm. Um, and then uh, there was a group of children. They were playing in the middle of the road. They are making a, a citadel, citadel, you know, with, with earth, <laughs> earth and water. They make it they are complete with uh, doors and windows and, <laughs> and many houses. Mm. With the... the in, inside a wall, you know, like a city, you know, with houses and storage of food and everything, everything. Yeah. Mm. Like a real city. It's just small and with earth and, and water. And one of them saw the Buddha, suddenly saw the Buddha coming with light, you know, so bright and so bright and so radiant everywhere. He saw the Buddha's light. And then he was so, suddenly he became so respectful mm, and happy. And when the Buddha came next to him, he put his palm together, bowed to him, and gave Buddha a piece of clay, <laughs> the one that they were playing, <laughs> and gave him one <laughs> to play with <laughs> children, you know? <laughs> Just like my dog, when I come home, he... He go and get this uh, veggie bone, give it to me. <laughs> and today, uh, because my uh, attendant came and said, oh, many of the Korean nuns, they want to become a real monks and nuns in appearance as well. So I said, but why so hurry? Can go, can do it later in Korea. There are more instrument, <laughs> clothes and everything. They don't have clothes here. Uh, we were talking like that, you know, so I said, okay, I give some of the clothes for them. And and my dog, you know, talking, talking, you know, singing, he also wants to be a monk. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking uh, together, me and my attendant, and he said, oh, 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 o
<laughs> he said, okay, if this life you are a good boy, next life you become a human, then you be- can become a monk. But I shaved your, your hair last year, month, remember? <laughs> it's summer, you know, summer, shave the, all the dogs shave their hair to keep cool. So less air gone, you know? Yeah. And he still continue talking, you know. He don't bark, it's not like barking. He says, <laughs> Yeah, you ask my attendant. And we both laugh, you know, because he was lamenting that he couldn't be a monk. Yeah. <laughs> I say, Next life, if you become a human, because you're a good dog now, next life you can be a human. And then you can become a monk, and I can I make you be a monk. If I cannot, then someone else will. <laughs> he normally don't just lay in there and talk like that. Only today, he talks sometimes, but only for 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 some reason. You understand? And today he talk again, <laughs> talk a long time, you know, many minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Me. My attendant and me, well, we were both hot and laughing at the same time. <laughs> and I have to tell, tell him, come here, come here. And he came and I hugged him and I said, that's, you know, next life. Yeah. <laughs> so funny, dog. <laughs> funny, dog. <laughs> so funny, funny. It's like lamenting, you know, like complaining, crying. It's not... Talking but crying way, it's not like uh, barking. No, he's not barking. He barks, then you know, different. He barks, then when he barks, it's like everybody else, like all the dogs. Yeah. When he wants to uh, tell somebody outside that don't go near and something like that, then he barks properly. Yeah. But this is a talk, long, long talk, many minutes talk. And I had to comfort him. Yeah. He was sad, he was very sad. <laughs> Singing a sad song and talking in a sad, sad way. <laughs> I also felt sorry for him. <laughs> but he didn't need to be a monk. I said, you will be liberated and go to high level. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, dog. <laughs> All my dogs don't have to reincarnate again. After they die, they go to either third, fourth level. Hamid went to the fifth level because I also donate some of my spiritual merit. So he went to the low fifth level. Low, but fifth. <laughs> okay. The Buddha took the piece of clay from the boy and gave it to Anand and tell him, uh, later, after we come home, we must use that to to smear around where the Buddha sleep. And then, and then uh, Anand did that. Yeah, and then the Buddha explained that Anand, just now, the little boy was very glad. You know, he sincerely offered me a piece of of, of uh, clay, like that, that uh, that merit will bear fruit in 500 years after my nirvana. He will be a king named Ayuka, and all his uh, buddies, you know, boys, uh, buddy in the group will be also uh, great court officials, and they will, they will rule many countries on earth. And he will also uh, propagate the Buddha's Dharma. He will build uh, temples and citadels and stupas, yes, to spread the Buddha's teaching 500 years after my nirvana. Yeah. He will also uh, divide the Buddha relics it's not like normal relics. It become almost like jewelry, you know, and very hard. I heard that somebody tried to use the strongest machine to crush it, and it doesn't crush. Yeah. Stronger than diamond. Yeah. 
Yeah, relic. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. He will divide the relics of the Buddha to different countries and make stupas to revere this, etc., etc. Yeah. He will build uh, eighty, eighty-four thousand stupas. Yeah, all over the planet to worship my relic and to spread the teaching, my teaching. Oh, the Anand was very happy, happy, said to the Buddha, Praise be the world-honored one. Mm. Uh, what, did, what did your world-honored one do in the former lives that now why you have so, you have, that you have such a merit that you have 8,000, 84,000, you know, Stupas, you know, and very high like that for you. Mm. Please, can you tell us? The Buddha, of course, tell, huh? <laughs> Anan, <laughs> I will tell you. Uh, long, 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 long time ago, there was a king of a very big country named Bataki. Uh, he ruled over eighty-four thousand <laughs> small countries, and uh, da 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 da. Yeah, you know that. Great kings always have eighty-four thousand small countries to rule. It's just a number, you know. The Buddha was very. F- he favored this eighty-four thousand very much. Eighty-four thousand means to save beings. Eighty-four thousand ki- smaller country. Eighty thousand over there. Miss what? Miss way to. A method, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eighty-four thousand uh, great uh, court officials, etc., etc. Yeah, it's just a name. Uh, probably at that time, eighty-four thousand is a big number. Yeah, just say today, like today in uh, in in Italy, you know, they say grazie mille, I mean thanks a thousand times. I always say grazie mille, you know, yeah. They could say grassy millions or grassy billion, but grassy million is good enough. <laughs> I mean, th- thanks a thousand times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at that time, there was a Buddha appear in the world named Faksa. The king and all the citizens worship Buddhism. Every day, uh, he offer everything that the Buddhas and the Sangha need. You know, like. Uh, The four four essential things like food and drink, clothing, um, bed and days, you know, like a sleeping blanket, everything like that to sleep, and medicine. Every day they offer with utmost uh, respect. Yes. But one day the king thought to himself, the Buddha is the Merit field for uh, heaven and earth. Anyone who saw good, uh, good seed will reap multifold good benefit. My citizen often saw the Buddha and can prostrate to the Buddha, meaning worship the Buddha and offer to him. Yeah, but many other smaller countries so far away. They don't even know how to. They don't even know Buddha's teaching. Therefore, they don't cultivate merit. I think I should uh, ask someone to paint a Buddha's picture, <laughs> and then give it to all the countries, other countries, so they will make offer to the Buddha's picture, you know, and they will have merit also. Then, said and done. Mm. He called the best painter in the country to come try to draw the Buddha's uh, painting, Buddha's uh, uh, appearance. But they cannot do it. <laughs> they try so hard, but they cannot paint the Buddha. The best. What kind of best painter is this? <laughs> Are they are something. <laughs> they all oh, they try their best. They could not paint. And then after that, 
the Buddha himself, yeah, painted. And then they take that picture, copy. <laughs> then okay, yeah. Then uh, 84,000 photo, I mean painting they make of the Buddha, just as good as the, the, the original from the Buddha painting. God, painter have to learn from the Buddha. <laughs> learn and professional and the best painters still need the Buddha do it first. Shame. <laughs> okay. The king Bataki uh, take, took all these paintings and divided to all different, every country one. <laughs> And then he, oh no, he 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 wanted to to give each country one of this painting, and so they call them call the country people, come here, to come to 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 his country, and bring flowers, incense, and etc. You know, to offer, and then invite that painting to their country, meaning having a good ritual, you know, good uh, proper way with respect to bring the photo, the picture, to their country, as if they, uh, as if they would invite the Buddha themselves. Yeah. Okay. So, because he has uh, been telling them, therefore even though they just have just a Buddha uh, painting, you know, the appearance of the Buddha, but they are also very, very respectful and offering all their best, as if they saw the Buddha in the flesh. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Anand, you should know. The king Bataki at that time was one of my incarnation. At that time, because I, I pay for, uh, uh, for the painter to paint 84,000 pictures uh, of the Buddha Fasa and give it to all the different countries. Therefore, today, uh, because of that, because of that merit, many, many, many lifetime, life after life, I either be king in heaven or on earth. Yes. And everywhere I was born, I was always born with uh, very beautiful bodies and a proper, a proper body and healthy and has 32 uh, auspicious marks, yeah, and 80, and 80 beautiful um, signs, yeah. And now I became Buddha because I, that also contributed to my merit to become Buddha as well. One of, ne? one of the reasons, one of the merits, yes. And even after... I uh, Nirvana. I still will have eighty-four thousand stupas built in my name. After I, Anan, and the whole assembly heard that, everyone was glad and inspired to make offering <laughs> to the Buddhas and others. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. You want some more? Yes. Short story, huh? Wow. Yesterday's story was very cool, huh? Yes. <laughs> a great, a great charity, huh? I ain't gonna do this. I'll do that. <laughs> Stamping his feet to want everything he want. <laughs> it just. But yesterday, and then after that, I told you, take no for answer. I don't mean take no for any no. Okay. When it's reasonable, if we quarrel with somebody, even in the Bible say so, if you have some quarrel with your brother, go apologize first before come and make offering to the God. Yeah? Mm. Everything you can take care of yourself. If you quarrel with somebody, then you just come and apologize. Yeah? We should not make a bad example like that. Hmm? But as I told you already, everything has to ask everyone, huh? 
the majority agree, then it's okay. And the minority have to keep quiet then, support, yeah? Even outside people, they are like that. If the majority vote for one president, then everybody else work with him. They might not agree with his principle or policy, but they work with him. They don't go and placard and ride in protest all day long. Huh? Even America, they don't do that. See what I mean? Even at one time, the votes were not very clear, you know. Maybe something not uh, correct has been done so that one president became president instead of the others. But the other say, okay, I, I give up for America's sake, you know? I don't want to make more trouble. How, how much more we, the practitioner, just has been more pliant, you know? More, more cooperative and more humble. You may win the case, but nobody will like you. That is a problem. So whatever we do, we have to consider. We should win or we should be loved. Understand me? The same with husband and wife. Quarreling, okay, I win. My wife, shut up. Oh, I, I, I'm right and my husband, shut up. But will he love you? Will he continue to love you like the first day? Understand? Or will she continue to love you at all in her heart? Even though she shut up, maybe she don't love you anymore. And then from then on, you know, cold war in the house. Okay? So before you do something rash, you have to think first. Is it worthy? Okay? Should I win or not? What for? Okay, understand? Don't keep pushing, pushing until people fed up. If you say I'm not humble as, uh, humble as before, you're wrong. <laughs> you don't know what I have to humble myself with. All this nonsense and garbage. Don't always push people to the edge, okay? And even then I didn't say anything. Keep pushing to my nose. I may not say anything, but I don't like this kind of people. Understand? It's too persistent for nothing. Why don't you persist on something good? Yeah? Instead, I teach you a method of meditation. I don't promise you anything else. I promise you if you practice well, huh, your level will go up and you'll be liberated. Huh? You won't go to hell. You won't be animal, you won't be hungry ghost. I promise that. That's it. Not because you cannot make mistake. But if you make mistake, you should repent, okay? You should not do it again. You must know that there are two ways to do things in this world. One way is you persist <laughs> until you get what you want. Another way is to do what you should and be loved, yeah? Love is more important than winning, right? So husband and wives, you know, brother, sister, similar, okay? To be loved is better, nicer, happier. Huh? Even if you win but nobody loves you, what's the use of that? Huh? What's the use of that? I like the story yesterday, he persists. <laughs> I, I will empty the sea. <laughs> then you should do that. Understand me? Because it's a good cause. He went through a lot, through a lot, a lot of sacrifice and hardship to get the, the, the jewel. Huh? For all the beings, for all the planets, for his citizen at least, huh? his country. And the dragon do nothing, have nothing to do, bored with life, just come and stole his jewel just like that. Understand? If I were there, I would also... <laughs> But I will not use a scoop. I will not use the, the, the turtle shell to scoop it one by one. I will use the machine. I pump it all up. <laughs> I will use the, the, the oil pumper stuff, you know, they pump the whole thing out. 
until the dragon dry up and come out and give me the my jewel back. <laughs> Poor Buddha. At that time, he didn't have machine, right? <laughs> If he had, he would <laughs> pump it all out. <laughs> that is an example that you should be persistent. Yeah, for a good cause, not for personal gain, personal winning, or personal for whatever. You know, garbage, garbage, garbage. These kind of people originally should not be here, but I forgive. Okay, I forgive for one time. And if something is not important and people don't answer you or don't do, just let it be. Yeah. You want more story? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Not tired yet? No. Oh. Mm. Um, we we'll read small, small story, okay, huh? Mm. Mm. Wow, the story yesterday is enough for three, four days. <laughs> it, was a, it was really interesting, huh? Yes. It has a kick, huh? Yes. <laughs> kick. I want it. <laughs> Stamping his feet, <laughs> but he was persistent because it's a good cause. You see, not because for himself, or that he's stubborn or he's spoiled or anything like that. He really wanted to help others. It was really a great cause. He wanted to save them from suffering, so they don't kill animals and all that, so that they don't have to go to hell. You see what I mean? Not just save them from hunger, but save from hellfire as well. So that's a great cause. So he is persistent, and that is correct. Everything else, if it's not a good cause, if just for self gain and self satisfy and self aggrandizement, then forget it. Okay? Otherwise, you're not a practitioner, and you will go nowhere with this kind of attitude. You never progress with this kind of attitude. Never, never. I really mean never, unless you repent. You know you have to change, be humble. Otherwise, useless, useless. Waste my time. Waste your time. Waste people's time. Okay. As a person named Ubatu, first I have heard one time the Buddha stay in the Prince Kida's garden. You know the gold garden. He's very famous. <laughs> very famous. I didn't hear anyone else who offer go, go to pave the garden for the Buddha or any saint like that. You know, only this story. At that time, uh, in the country Lajuki, there were two brothers, merchants. Yeah, they stayed together in one, one place. The older, the elder brother, want to marry one of the noble, rich family's daughter in the vicinity, but at that time she was still very young, so they don't want her, they don't want her to marry yet, uh, because of survival, you know, for for living. He went out to another country for doing business. Many many years, he didn't come back. Nobody know why. So the uh, the the daughter of the noble rich family was waiting, waiting, waiting long time, mm. and she worried that she getting old. We we are no. Mm. I would worry <laughs> if I were. I would be very worried. I don't worry anymore now, mind you. I don't worry anymore. <laughs> It's too late now to worry. <laughs> Yeah, because in the people there is a saying say that the men will never get old, but woman, time is limit. Why is that? <laughs> What kind of talk is that? Who is the saying here? I don't know. Some people talk nonsense, <laughs> right? <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. Okay. If I know who say that, I will tell you. Don't, don't, shut up. <laughs> you don't know anything. Yeah, we live forever. 
woman power. <laughs> okay, therefore, the noble family uh, father called the brother, younger brother came and said, your elder brother went uh, into another country. I don't know where he went in a long, long time. Maybe he died already. Okay, so I uh, marry my daughter to you. Uh, what do you think? Instead of elder brother, wait for him. He, wait, he married his daughter to the younger brother who stays at home. And the younger brother say, uh, Noble sir, no, no, that won't do. Uh, that won't do. Uh, my elder brother is still alive. I will never do such a strange thing. Yeah. From then on, the noble father always keep pushing, <laughs> pushing <laughs> the younger brother to marry a dog. This, I, I heard it familiar. <laughs> pushing, pushing. <laughs> persistent, persistent. <laughs> Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I thought this only happened in my group. <laughs> okay, okay. So our group is not so bad. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you continue pushing me, huh? <laughs> you can push anybody else, I don't care. Don't push me, I'm busy. <laughs> okay, he keeps nagging him, pushing him, you know, pressing him has to marry his daughter. But uh, this uh, younger brother still humbly refused. <laughs> Probably maybe he doesn't like her. Who knows? Maybe he loves somebody else, you know, prettier or, you know, more compatible. Who knows, you know? It doesn't mean that uh, a woman is pretty, that every man would desire her. Not necessary, yeah? Yeah. It's just compatibility, affinity, also the... Personality, you know? Men often like sweet women, mostly. Some not, some don't. Some naughty men don't like the sweet women. <laughs> okay. And then the father, the noble father, has no other choice, no other way to push him. <laughs> he, he wrote a letter. He wrote a fake letter from elder. Brother, fake one, fake one. Yeah. And then ask the, uh, another merchant, you know, bring it to the younger brother and say, your brother is kaput, dead. <laughs> oh, man, wicked, wicked. He's dead long, long time ago already. And the younger brother opened the letter and knew that his brother dead. He was, he was standing there, uh, you know, in the house. I mean, not standing. He was still crying and mourning his brother. And then the noble father came, pushing again. <laughs> push, push. <laughs> uh, no, he said, why are you so sad today? <laughs> As if he doesn't know. <laughs> and then he said, noble sir, I have just got a letter saying that my brother, elder brother, died long time already. So the noble man, you know, pretend to be kind of wise and, I don't know, Buddha-like, say, Oh, it's okay, don't be so sad. You know, you know, life and death is normal <laughs> in this life. Yeah. This is normal. Mm. Uh, whoever dies, let them die. <laughs> and now we are still alive. We have to take care of the live person. Yeah, pushing, pushing. Wow. Yeah. Now I ask you honestly, if you want to marry my daughter or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you don't, then I will arrange otherwise. Yeah. And he keep pressing, pressing. You know, saying a lot of things. So finally, 
He okay. Yeah. I wouldn't okay, but I don't know why this boy. He was vulnerable at that time, I guess. You know, uh, brother just died. You know, his heart is still very sad, and he cannot think straight. You know, so I think that is a good time for this father to pressure him. You know, persistent in this case worked, huh? And then he think like this. He was thinking to himself, if I don't marry her, somebody else will. Anyway, yeah. So it's okay, mm-hmm. and then uh, they marry already, and they're both very, you know, passionately uh, happy together, blah blah. And then they heard the news that the elder brother is coming back. Oh, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> what to do? <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> huh? Run. You? What? Give your wife back. Oh, that's <laughs> your husband. <laughs> and you? What would you do? What would you do? Any? Hide in there, behind there. Tell me. Talk to me. <laughs> not the woman. Ask the man. Not the woman. <laughs> She's sitting there for a moment because of the translation. Ask the man, not a woman. Yeah. Hmm? Il, il peut s'enfuir. Come on, yeah? He oh, can go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run. Already said. The other one? Anyone? Oh, man, you don't know what to do? <laughs> oh, this man had no idea? Jesus Christ. I would be happy and meet my brother. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> But what to do? You married his wife. Yeah. I mean, meet his wife to be. Yeah. Has to continue. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. But he was very scared, very frightened. Then he ran away to another country, mm. a Save country. Okay. The younger brother came to the Buddha's area. And then he feel very, very ashamed, very, very ashamed. He prostrate at the feet of the Buddha and said, "Obeisance to the world honor one. I came here with very sincere, deep sincerity to request to be a monk. Please be merciful and accept me." And the Buddha, okay, you know, happy, and let him become. One of the monk, and uh, changed his name into Yubatu. Mm. He is very diligent, studying under the Buddha and his teaching. Not long after, he attained arahat. Yeah. So in the unfort- in the misfortune, you find a fortune. Sometimes like that. He has all kind of uh, miracle power as well as merit. Okay. The elder brother came home. Know that his brother, a, a younger brother, um, married his wife. So he was very, very sad, uh, very angry. Uh, he come and looking for him everywhere, want to want to kill him. We couldn't find him. Mm. Then people tell him that his brother went to see the Buddha and uh, became a monk already over there. Yeah. So he uh, hired somebody with five hundred pieces of gold to go there and kill his brother. Mm. Both of them, he and the killer, the contractor killer, went together to Save country. When they arrived, they saw Ubatu, you know, I mean, a younger brother, sitting on, uh, somewhere and meditate. The contractor killer saw him meditate, you know, with a very dignified posture and look very peaceful and saintly. He felt very, very sorry, he felt ashamed and very pitiful, you know, and he loved the um, the monk. Was you know the younger brother monk, so he was thinking, 
how, how can I have the heart to kill this person? He's a monk, he's a saint, he does do nothing wrong to me, we have no enmity with each other. How can I kill him? But if I don't kill him, then I cannot get the gold. What to do? So he has to shoot. He used the arrow to shoot out, but then the, the arrow came to the elder brother instead. He died with hatred in his heart, double hatred. So because of that, double hatred, poisonous heart, so he reborn as a poisonous snake, uh, hiding in one of the holes next to the, the gate of where the Buddha was staying. Yeah. And he was waiting for the opportunity to bite the monk brother to revenge. One day this snake was crawling on the ground between the, the door, you know, suddenly the door, because the wind blow or something, uh, sandwich him and he died again. <laughs> he died, but his terrible hatred, poisonous heart, still not died yet. Let's see what happened. <laughs> I'm also excited like you. <sighs> you know, also very curious like you. Oh, <sighs> so because of uh, his uh, hatred is not abased yet, not subsided yet. So he vowed to become a, a, a poisonous insect, you know, worm inside his uh, brother monk's room, right in there. And he was waiting. And then one time the, this uh, younger brother monk was meditating. He jumped right onto his head, bit him, he died. <sighs> the whole Sangha saw in why this monk died suddenly like that. Yeah, I don't know why. So the Sariputra know. Only Sariputra knew. So he came to say the. Uh, no, he knew that he died. You know, he knew he died, but he didn't know why. So he came to Buddha and said, prostrate to uh, honor one. Bichu Ubatu, he already, he already uh, attained arahat. Why, why is this uh, insect, you know, or this worm still can kill him like that? Could you please tell us? They don't know why, but uh, Sariputra know that this, the poisonous worm killed him. The Buddha says, Sariputra, you should know. This is a karma from a long time past. Yeah, at that time there was a Buddha, the Patekya Buddha, meaning the lone Buddha, you know, the Buddha who doesn't teach. He practiced meditation and uh, discipline in the forest all by himself, and now he already uh, graduated, <laughs> became a Buddha. Okay, one time there was one uh, a, pers- uh, a hunter passing by, and he arranged all the traps and the you know, the, the, the terrible the traps, yeah? And all terrible devices to catch the animals. The Prateka, this Prateka Buddha felt very compassionate for all the animals. So he used his uh, ways and means to obstruct this. Therefore, the hunter cannot catch any of the animal at all. So the hunter was very, very angry with him. Mm. He used a poison arrow, shoot the Prateka Buddha, and die. Uh, just shoot him, but he didn't die yet. Yeah. Because this Prateka Buddha feels sorry for this hunter. He wants him to avoid, I mean, uh, non, non-stop hell. Mm and he wants him to repent his sin. And then so he flew up into the sky, probably, probably the, uh, you know, the uh, what? transformation body, huh? He flew into the sky and he showed him 
18 uh, magical power. Yeah. And then after that, the hunter was feeling very scared and sorry, sorry. He was so respectful. Then he came in and apologized to the uh, Pateka Buddha. He also happy to forgive him. But after he came back, one of the poisonous insects bit him and he died. You know, the, um, the hunter died. After he died, he went to hell. Five hundred lives he has always been bitten by poisonous, poisonous uh, insects. And then today, even though he already became our heart, the, the sin is still there. So he, that's why the poisonous insect uh, kill him. Yeah. The hunter at that time is uh, is the Bichu, Ubatu, the younger brother. Yeah. Because that time he was wickedly wanting to kill the Pratekya Buddha. But after that, he was repentant, remorse, you know? Yeah, and also he vowed that whatever, please let him uh, meet an uh, enlightened teacher, enlightened master, whenever the time comes, so that he can become enlightened and attain uh, sainthood. Therefore, <laughs> because of that, uh, he was repentant and remorseful and vowed to become a saint. Therefore, today he has this merit to meet the Buddha. After the Buddha said that, Sariputra and all the assembly, everyone was feel afraid of karma and the retribution. So everyone tried to control their uh, mind, sp- speech, and action from then. So, yeah. From then on, <laughs> they're trying to be good. Okay. All these stories, I guess, it come, come down to uh, karma and retribution. Huh? Just real stories so that, so that we remember better. Better than just say, what, as you saw, so shall you reap. Huh? That's which story. It's good, huh? Yeah. So it's good if you do something wrong, you have to repent. At least after, after hell, you still can come back and be a saint. Maybe that's why they say every saint has, has a past. Every sinner has a future. Thank you.